Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us for Peace Through the Pandemic. And today we're talking about end times. I want to start with this question. If Jesus were returning tomorrow, what would you do today? I think it's always clarifying whenever I consider that. Hi, Cheryl. Um, if Jesus were returning tomorrow, would I want to be in my Bible and study more about him? If he were returning tomorrow, would I want to pray to him and, and talk? If he were returning tomorrow, hi, Aaron, would I want to invite people to um, hear of the Lord or maybe share my faith? The answer to all of those for me, if Jesus were returning tomorrow, is yes, yes, and yes. And I don't know if you've ever thought that Jesus was going to return in your own lifetime. For me, I thought this since I was a child. I'll never forget being in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin on 817 May Street, and there was a thunderstorm coming down, and I was just observing the thunderstorm in the garage, um, you know, the smell of the rain and, and hearing the thunder, you know, just incredible time. And I had this thought, I never hear an audible voice from God, but I had this thought, thanks for the birthday wishes, Cheryl, um, that God was going to return in my lifetime. I was thinking that maybe um, just as this thunder is pretty big and loud, so maybe I'll be here not observing from a garage, but from wherever I am, seeing Jesus coming down on the clouds after the trumpet blast. And because I thought this from an early age, I've had times in my life where I thought for sure he was coming. Like I was a high school graduate in the year 2000. And if you lived through Y2K, maybe you too thought maybe this was the end. <laughs> For a while, I thought maybe, you know, God, if I serve you strong enough, long enough, you know, for 33 years, just as Jesus was done after 33, maybe that will be the end for me as well. Uh, there, there have been other times the uh, people who thought, you know, the end of the world would be at the Mayan calendar. I think that was 2012. And maybe right now um, people are saying, you know, COVID-19, that this is the end. Well, I want to take you to some scriptures that speak about the end. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, people. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, thank you, family. Um, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 24. And in Matthew chapter 24, uh, look how it starts. The disciples come to Jesus and they say, what will be the sign of your coming? And Jesus goes on and he explains a lot of things that are going on and have been going on for a while. That nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So there have been wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and earthquakes. I heard of an earthquake in L.A. yesterday, earthquake in Ohio. Um, all of these things are going to happen. Uh, he talks about the gospel being preached to the whole world. And you think of the World Wide Web and how the gospel is being shared all over right now because of uh, that instrument, that tool. In fact, when you look at Matthew chapter 24 in the book of Revelation, uh, there's a, a bunch of corollary there. To the degree that I believe we are living in the end times, to the degree that I believe we could be alive while Jesus does return. The only thing is, we don't know exactly when he's going to come. Thank you, Kristen, for the birthday wishes. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> um, in fact, there is a purpose for the reason we don't know. Jesus is described as coming as a thief in the night, and let's just consider that. Um, if a robber were going to plan on stealing all your stuff, I consider home alone, <laughs> um, they don't give you a courtesy call. They don't say, hey, uh, I was thinking of stopping by tomorrow, you know, at 10 p.m. Um, just want to let you know that's when I'm going to take your stuff. And the reason they don't do that is because if they would, you'd call the police. <laughs> you'd make sure everything was barricaded. You'd put all the valuables in a safe and they would have nothing to steal because you'd be ready for the robbers, Right. So robbers don't give courtesy calls. Well, neither does God. The reason he has not let us know a specific time or date is that we would be ready all of the time. That just as you secure your stuff in your house at all time, whether through a ring doorbell or locking your doors or having a safe at home, so also we would be ready and secure at all times for the Lord's return. In fact, as we go to Matthew 25, Jesus tells us a parable about this. It's about 10 people who are waiting for the bride uh, groom or the groom the, to, to return for the wedding feast. And five were really smart and they made sure to bring extra oil for their lamps. And five were not as smart and they didn't bring extra oil. 
Well, the five who didn't bring extra ran out and they had to go get some more. And by that time, the, the groom came for the wedding and the five who already went. But the five without oil could not go. And, and when they wanted to get into the feast, they, they weren't let in. And what that was a picture of was faith. That just as those who brought extra oil had faith in every season, no, long, no matter how long he was away, no matter how long Jesus is away, so we need to in every season be ready for his return. The five who did not bring enough, they're a picture of those who took a season off. And I think of our lives, how easy this is to do, to say, well, Jesus, you know, I'm in college right now, and, you know, following you is just not something that fits my schedule. Jesus, you know, I'm uh, expressing my freedom. It's summertime. Uh, it's just something that doesn't fit my schedule. And, and God tells us, no, I'm coming like a thief. You need to be ready at all times. There's never a season that you should take off. Well, more end times teaching is uh, the talents. And the talents remind us that we are to um, use whatever God gave us for his glory. So some people have said it is my birthday. And it reminds me, what am I here for? Am I here for Dustin Bloomer? Absolutely not. God had me in mind and I am here to put to use whatever he gave so I can prop up the name of Jesus. And the degree I do that is the degree that I live well. I consider um, some stars who use their talents to prop up the name of Jesus. The Bears have a new quarterback by the name of Nick Foles. And I remember when he led the Eagles to a Super Bowl win. And after he won that Super Bowl, just gave a beautiful confession of Jesus, the Savior. That's a man living well, living, recognizing the end times, that my talents are to be put to use for the sake of God. The final end times teaching is the separating of sheep and goats. And if you read this one, it reminds us that believers will be up to good things. We will want to love one another and help our neighbor and how good that is to do. And so Jesus says, you know, um, when I was naked, you clothed me. Hungry, you gave me food. Um, when I needed a place to stay, you let me in. But the believers wondered, you know, when did we do that? <laughs> Because believers don't always think about all the fruit they're producing. They just act in accordance to Jesus. And, and he reminds us, whatever we do for the least of those, we've done for him. So Jesus could return at any time. And what would he find you doing? Hopefully he'd find you with faith in your heart. This is a season you draw near. Finding you using whatever he gave you to prop up the name of Jesus. Finding you loving your neighbor. You know, today I, I consider what Job said. Job, in the midst of his struggle, he wasn't in the midst of COVID-19. Job, rather, was in the midst of his own personal turmoil. And in the very middle of the book, for the emphasis, uh, he had these beautiful words. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end you will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. So today is my birthday. You want to know my birthday wish? It's what Job said. I just want to see Jesus. <laughs> and until then, how my heart yearns within me. But maybe we'll see him soon. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you've come for me. I thank you so much that you've put faith in my heart that I would know not only Jesus' name, but what his salvation means. Thank you for the time of grace I have to give you glory. Let me use all that you gave to prop up your name. Bless your people. Help them to be ready for your return in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if this has been helpful, please remember to share on Facebook. Uh, like our church Facebook page. I think I have. Wait, stop. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Don't bring the Bible. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Can you guess my birthday wish? Do you have it? Taking a moment to write happy birthday to Pastor Bloomer, show him some love.